Welcome back to the Perlworks channel. My name is John. The folks over at Woodwatch reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to try one of our wood watches? No strings attached. I said, sure. So I picked out the Sand Surfer and it's a pretty cool watch. But I also asked them to send me one more so that I could give it away to you guys. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. They sent over the Oakley, which is made of walnut. So I'm gonna make a little walnut box it's gonna have a single drawer to hold the watch and I'll ship it off to one of you guys, whoever wins the contest. So it's just gonna be a free giveaway. Stick around to the end to see how you can enter to win. Let's get started. As usual, I'm getting started at the jointer to start the milling process. This piece of walnut is just a piece of scrap I've had lying around. All of that dried glue there is from my daughter playing with glue in the shop. So uh, it's time to get this board made into something. It actually has a fair amount of figure in it and it's gonna look pretty nice in the end. Uh, but the outside's a little rough around the edges. I'm resawing at the bandsaw just to save material. I usually do this at the table saw, but I got some new blades recently and I'm trying to tune the bandsaw so that I don't have to waste as much material at the table saw. So after the resawing process, I can take it back to the jointer and planer and get everything planed down to 3 eighths of an inch thick. And here you can see what a nice book match we have, even though I won't be really taking advantage of this book match. I also recently got a new Festool sander. This is the ETS EC150 and it is amazing. And for some reason it's not really in stock anywhere and I was able to snag it on Amazon and it was quickly out of stock again. So got kind of lucky there. Over at the table saw, I can get these pieces cut to their final length. This is gonna be a square box, four inches in length on each side, but it will be mitered. So I like to cut everything to its final length and then rip the miters to the edge of the boards. So you can see I have the blade here tilted to 45 degrees with the fence in place and I snuck up on this cut for the first piece and then the next three pieces I can cut them without any hesitation. And here's a close up of, of that shot with the blade reaching right to the point of the end of the board. Off camera, I prepared the back panel and groove to hold the back panel. They're both about 3 16 of an inch thick. And this panel is just going to float in place. There's no need to have any glue, but I do have glue in each of the joints, and I'll just fold the box up with blue tape on the back to acting as clamps. I can then tape up this last joint before setting it aside to dry. These miters did not come out perfect, and they rarely do for me. It's just not something I do very often, and that might be sort of a uh, chicken and egg thing. I sort of stay away from it because they don't come out good. And I just like the look of other joints more than these. Miters with just glue are not very strong, so I'm going to add some splines to reinforce the joint. This is a spline jig that I've had for a while, just rides over the fence, and it's simple enough to use. The blade is an eighth inch kerf flat bottom grind blade that I use for a lot of my joinery. And the splines here were just plain down at the drum center to a loose enough fit so that there was room for glue. After the glue is dried, I can cut the excess off with a flush cut saw and then sand everything nice and flush. For the little drawer, I'll be using the half bind lock joint that I like to use in a lot of my work. And I'm using that same eighth inch blade that I used to cut the splines. The drawer front is a piece of wool that came from the same board I've been using. And the sides and back are pieces of maple. These little drawers are simple enough to put together with glue, especially when you only have one of them. I have a project coming up in a month or two that will have many more than just one, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but anyways, after this glue dries, I can just trim up some of the edges with a block plane and then see how the drawer fits. After a little bit of sanding, I can add a 3 32nd inch roundover to all of the edges, and then I can add the Pearlworks brand to the back of the box. Now every time I use Cherry as my test piece for the brand, I always come out with a less than perfect brand on the final piece because Cherry burns much easier than other woods, and I don't realize it until it's too late. Last year I started designing some custom drill poles, and this is one of them. I spent many hours learning to draw this in Fusion 360, and I'm not very proficient in Fusion, so each step was its own Google and YouTube search to figure things out. This one in particular is essentially a little finger pull for small drawers. It can be scaled to any size, and this one happens to be about 3 quarters of an inch in diameter. My initial plan was to find a shop to cast these in brass, but that has been a bit of an uphill battle. 
A friend of mine recently milled four of them out of brass on his homemade milling machine and they look amazing. I'll try to share some of those photos on Instagram soon. Anyway, I decided to try and mill my own version out of wood. I had never tried any 3D toolpaths, let alone a two-sided operation like this. I used a free trial of MeshCam to generate the toolpath and that was about all that needed to be done. There are definitely some improvements to be made in the process, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. These will be great for custom projects in the future. Let me know what you guys think. The finish here is just two coats of Danish oil, which I like to apply liberally, let it sit for about a minute or so, and then dry it off completely with fresh paper towels. And it's cool to see the finish go on the drawer pull here because this just started out as an idea in my head and then now it's an actual item that I can attach to a box that I've made. And I designed it with this screw in mind, it's just a countersunk brass screw with an oval head, and it just looks nice when everything comes together. The actual brass version of this will have two pins on the back for alignment purposes so that the drawer pull doesn't twist over time. Alright, that's about it for this project. This was a quick one. It's not exactly perfect, but it's going to have a free watch inside, so uh, no complaints, right? So if you want to enter for a chance to win, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below. The comment can be anything you want. It could be a suggestion for what you want to see on this channel in the future or completely unrelated to woodworking. Also, I wouldn't mind if you followed me on Instagram at Perlworks, though that's not required because I don't want to force people to make an Instagram account if they don't want to. I want to thank Woodwatch for sponsoring this giveaway. I'll leave some links to their website in the description below as well as the full details of the giveaway. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next one and thanks for watching.